Spur. I understand. Go on inside, Peppy. Go on inside. Take care of the telephone. In the meantime, everybody picks up their clothes. Harry. Needs entertainment elsewhere without him. Come on. Okay. Welcome to another episode of Hollywood Secrets. The 1970s were a groundbreaking era in cinema, filled with bold storytelling and innovative filmmaking. However, not every film from this decade received the recognition it deserved. Today, we're shining a spotlight on the top 10 most underrated movies of the 1970s, hidden gems that may have slipped under the radar but are well worth your time. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell to stay up to date with our latest deep dives into Hollywood's hidden treasures. The Last Detail, 1973 Directed by Hal Ashby, The Last Detail stars Jack Nicholson as a Navy sailor tasked with escorting a young recruit, played by Randy Quaid, to military prison. Along the way, the two form an unlikely bond, and Nicholson's character attempts to show the young man a good time before his confinement. Although The Last Detail received critical acclaim, it didn't achieve the commercial success or lasting recognition it deserved. Nicholson's raw, charismatic performance is one of his best, and the film's gritty, realistic portrayal of military life is both poignant and powerful. The film's exploration of authority, rebellion, and friendship resonates even today. It's a must-watch for fans of character-driven dramas and those interested in the social issues of the 1970s. The Friends of Eddie Coyle, 1973 Directed by Peter Yates, The Friends of Eddie Coyle is a gritty crime drama about an aging gunrunner, played by Robert Mitchum, who becomes an informant to avoid a long prison sentence. The film's realistic depiction of the criminal underworld sets it apart from more glamorous crime films of the era. Despite its strong performances and authentic portrayal of the criminal life, The Friends of Eddie Coyle didn't receive the attention it deserved upon release. Mitchum's nuanced performance as a weary, conflicted man is a standout in his career. The film has gained a cult following for its unflinching look at the harsh realities of crime. Its influence can be seen in later crime dramas that prioritize realism over spectacle. The King of Marvin Gardens, 1972 Directed by Bob Raffelson, The King of Marvin Gardens stars Jack Nicholson and Bruce Dern as estranged brothers who reunite in Atlantic City to pursue a dubious real estate scheme. The film is a moody exploration of broken dreams and family dynamics. While The King of Marvin Gardens received praise for its performances and cinematography, it was overshadowed by other films in Nicholson's and Raffelson's careers. The film's introspective and melancholic tone may have contributed to its initial lack of recognition. The film is now appreciated for its atmospheric portrayal of a decaying Atlantic City and its exploration of disillusionment and failed ambitions, themes that resonate with modern audiences. Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia, 1974 Directed by Sam Peckinpah Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia is a violent and nihilistic tale of a down-and-out bartender, played by Warren Oates, who embarks on a dangerous mission to retrieve the head of a dead man for a reward. The film is a grim and unflinching look at greed and desperation. The film was a critical and commercial failure upon release, with many critics put off by its brutal violence and bleak tone. However, it has since been re-evaluated as one of Peckinpah's most personal and uncompromising works. Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia has gained a cult following for its raw intensity and its portrayal of a world devoid of morality. It's a must-see for fans of dark, challenging cinema. Tulane Blacktop, 1971 Directed by Monty Hellman, Tulane Blacktop is a minimalist road movie that follows two drag racers, played by singer James Taylor and Beach Boys drummer Dennis Wilson, as they journey across America in their 1955 Chevy. The film is a meditative exploration of the open road and the existential search for meaning. Despite its unique style and mood, Tulane Blacktop was not a commercial success and was largely overlooked at the time. Its unconventional narrative and lack of traditional plot structure likely contributed to its initial lack of recognition. The film has since been embraced as a cult classic, with its influence seen in later road movies and indie films that prioritize atmosphere and character over plot. 
it's a quintessential piece of 1970s counterculture cinema. The Heartbreak Kid, 1972 Directed by Elaine May, The Heartbreak Kid is a dark romantic comedy about a newlywed, played by Charles Grodin, who falls in love with another woman during his honeymoon. The film is a biting satire of love, marriage, and the pursuit of happiness. Although The Heartbreak Kid was well-received by critics, it hasn't maintained the same level of recognition as other comedies from the 1970s. Grodin's brilliant performance and May's sharp direction make it a standout film that deserves more attention. The film's cynical take on relationships and its exploration of self-absorption and disillusionment are as relevant today as they were in the 1970s. It's a hidden gem for fans of dark, intelligent comedy. Wanda, 1970 Directed by and starring Barbara Loden, Wanda is a stark and intimate portrayal of a woman adrift in life. The film follows the title character as she leaves her family and drifts through a series of bleak encounters, ultimately becoming involved with a small-time criminal. Wanda was largely ignored upon its release, and Loden's work as a filmmaker was not fully appreciated until years later. The film's raw, unpolished style and its focus on a marginalized female protagonist were groundbreaking for its time. Wanda has since been recognized as a pioneering work of independent cinema, influencing later films that explore themes of alienation and female autonomy. It's a powerful and haunting film that deserves wider recognition. Rolling Thunder, 1977 Directed by John Flynn, Rolling Thunder is a revenge thriller about a Vietnam War veteran, played by William Devane, who returns home only to have his life shattered by a brutal robbery. The film is a gritty and violent exploration of trauma and vengeance. Rolling Thunder was overshadowed by other Vietnam War-themed films of the era and didn't receive the attention it deserved. Its dark, uncompromising approach to the subject matter may have limited its initial appeal. The film has gained a cult following for its intense portrayal of post-war trauma and its influence on the revenge genre. It's a must-see for fans of hard-hitting, emotionally charged dramas. The Parallax View, 1974 Directed by Alan J. Pakula, The Parallax View is a paranoid thriller about a journalist, played by Warren Beatty, who uncovers a conspiracy surrounding a series of political assassinations. The film's eerie atmosphere and complex narrative make it a standout in the genre. Despite being well-crafted and thought-provoking, the parallax view was overshadowed by other political thrillers of the 1970s. Its unsettling depiction of conspiracy and control didn't resonate as widely at the time. The film has since been recognized as one of the great political thrillers of the 1970s, influencing later films that explore themes of paranoia, conspiracy, and the erosion of trust in institutions. The Long Goodbye, 1973 Directed by Robert Altman, The Long Goodbye is a neo-noir film that reimagines Raymond Chandler's detective Philip Marlowe, played by Elliot Gould, in a 1970s Los Angeles setting. The film is a darkly comedic and unconventional take on the classic noir genre. The Long Goodbye was initially met with mixed reviews, as its subversive approach to the noir genre didn't sit well with all audiences. However, it has since been re-evaluated as a brilliant and innovative film that deconstructs the traditional detective narrative. The film's influence can be seen in later neo-noir and postmodern films that challenge genre conventions. Gould's portrayal of Marlowe as a laid-back, disillusioned detective is now considered iconic. The 1970s were a decade of bold experimentation and creative risk-taking in cinema, and these underrated films are prime examples of the era's innovative spirit. Whether you're drawn to gritty crime dramas, existential road movies, or darkly comedic satires, these films offer a unique and powerful viewing experience. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to Hollywood Secrets for more deep dives into the hidden treasures of old Hollywood. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.